Come on out. Oh, there he is. Joshua Dobson, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, speaking of singing at karaoke, uh, I'm looking around here and I see a guy named Aaron King. He's, he, he's got great microphone skills. Maybe you can loosen this crowd up a little bit. Why don't you come up here and sing us a song? I'm busy. <laughs> uh, no, uh, we chose Victor's because uh, they actually are going to pay for my softball dues. I got like five teams this year, so they're going to pay for it all to keep drinking beer. <laughs> um, let's see, today's Monday, February 16th, President's Day. Did anyone have the day off today? Anyone? No one. Can I hear someone? Someone? I'll say, great. I work with the little guy in the back over there. If we get him fucked up enough, we're not going to have to work tomorrow. So, uh, as many shots as you want. That'd be great. Um, also, you know, I was down in Georgia for the month of January. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of material to write up down there. It's, it's uh, amazing. It makes you actually really love Iowa. But there's a lot of similarities between Georgia people and Hawkeye fans, and I'm going to tell you what, what, the, yeah. what the situation oh, yeah. is. Iowa State fans usually wear like one article of clothing that's maybe a t-shirt or a hat. The Hawkeye fans wear the whole fucking ensemble. I mean, you got the matching shoes, the pants, the shirt. They're not leaving the house without their starter coat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you buy that at Walmart? Anyone here work at Walmart? Anyone? In the back? I thought so. Give it up for Walmart, huh? They have like 35 aisles and only five of them are open. <laughs> No, but really, uh, yesterday, anyone watched the NASCAR race? What was it, Daytona 500? Anyone? What the fuck is this church? Let's go! No, I, I seriously, I, I really got into it. Being down in Atlanta, those people, they were like, uh, it's like the NASCAR country, I guess. They, that's, what they, that's what they claim. So uh, they were all this NASCAR shit, but they don't even know the driver's name. They just know the number. They're like, yeah, I root for number nine. Who the fuck is number nine? I mean, I watch football. I don't say Peyton Manning by number 18. I'm like, yeah, I like number 18. It's fu it's, it's, seriously, it's fucked up. But, uh, you know, I was watching the Daytona 500 yesterday because last Sunday when football was done, I felt like I was going to become suicidal. So my dad and I got into this uh, little pool where you pick a driver every week. So I'm sitting at the sports bar watching the Daytona 500 trying to get into it. And I've been a fan now for... Let's see, Dale Earnhardt died. One, two, three. I've been a fan for like 48 hours, and it's been an awesome 48 hours. So I'm watching this race, and I'm, uh, I'm at a sports bar, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm watching these guys. They go from like second place to 40th place to third place. It's all confusing. I have no idea how rednecks can follow this sport. <laughs> So I'm, I'm watching this race, and all of a sudden, with 50 laps to go, which I don't even know what the fuck that means, but that's like something like two miles or something, I don't know. A quarter of the race left, they call it. And I was kind of pissed off because my driver, which I don't even know his number, was somewhere like 29th or something. But I had some redneck guy next to me, and he's fucking throwing chairs because his driver got 13th and not in the top eight. I don't get it. Whatever. So I, I called down to one of my buddies in Georgia because I really thought there was going to be riots because they called this, this race early. And I hear people in the background just screaming and hollering and having a great time. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? The race is over. And he's like, you will never believe what's happening right now. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I am at this biggest redneck bar ever. And instead of 50 laps to go, they changed it to 50 seconds left. So they had a fucking countdown. They're like, 22, 21, 20. And I was like, God, that'd probably take three hours. How the hell rednecks count backwards? They can't even count forward. <laughs> no, but really, I, I drive a 2005 Dodge Stratus. Anyone in here drive a Dodge Stratus? Fucking, that car's fucking awesome. I drive it all over. <laughs> seriously, no, seriously, it's, it's like a V8. It fucking goes fast. I get, I get parking tickets all the time. Parking tickets, speeding tickets, whatever. I get all of them. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> No, but really, I put like a thousand miles on my car a week, so I have to get my oil changed like like every three weeks. Anyone here think that getting an oil change is like a fucking debacle? <laughs> I mean, you go in there and you're like, hey, can I get an oil change? And the lady at the counter's like, what kind of oil do you want? I don't give a fuck. Put oil in my car. <laughs> Someone's going to get my car wherever I need to go. Then like five minutes later, some little guy about this tall and about this wide comes out. He's like, uh, yeah, we're going to head and look at your car and 
This is what your air filter looks like. And this is what your air filter should look like. like. Holy fuck, how did my car even get here? Fix, fix it, just get it, fix it. And then he pulls out of his pocket a fucking spark plug. Uh, yeah, this is your spark plug. What the fuck? Did you take a jackhammer to that? How did my car even start? So, you know, you're just like, fuck, just fix it, all right? I know you say it's 20 minutes, it's going to take two hours. So you go in this little waiting room, it smells like piss. <laughs> I know you guys all know what I'm talking about. You got the fucking lady with the two kids screaming in your ear, the guy sitting next to you with the terrible B.O. body odor, <laughs> and terrible TV. So actually, in this one event that I, I was actually thinking about this, I, I actually walked across the street, and I went to Barnes & Noble. That's kind of funny in itself because usually athletes like myself don't read. <laughs> but uh, you know, I did. And I kind of kept my head on a swivel because I did not want anyone to see me in this place. So I mostly to the back and I actually ended up in this uh, relationship section. That's kind of ironic in itself too because I don't need to know shit about relationships. It's always the other person's fault, not mine. <laughs> No, but I, I actually, I was actually looking for a book because I wanted to, I wanted to make fun of it, and it's, it's actually called He's Just Not That Into You. There's a movie out about it now too. Has anyone paid money to see this thing? Yeah. <laughs> How come the guy goes, yeah? <laughs> Makes sense. No, but really, I mean, like, it's supposed to be like you're discovering guy, single guy's truth and what's not true or whatever. I got an idea, pay me 15 bucks, save your time, I'll tell you what the fuck's wrong with you, and we'll move on. <laughs> so, I, so I seriously open up this book and I kind of look around and I'm like, oh my god. If someone really sees me reading a book, you just got that into you, it's going to be bad. <laughs> so I open up and verse number one actually said, he's just not that into you if he doesn't ask you out, because if he asks you out, he'll be into you. Well, that, that makes sense. Let me turn the page and keep reading and wasting my time. <laughs> One of the supporting cases was is that a guy would actually use the excuse, Aaron, that he doesn't want to ruin friendship. I don't know about you, but I think all these guys in here will ruin friendship for sex. I, I know guys that ruin marriages for sex, huh? And let's be honest, Aaron. I know you in the back. He's like, honey, shh, oh, no, not true. Oh, so I, I'm actually interested, so I turn over, I keep turning the pages, I get to chapter two, and it says, he's just not that into you if he's not calling you. And I'm thinking to myself, no shit, you have to read a book to understand this? I mean, I don't know, but usually guys get drunk about once, twice, <clears throat> then seven times a week. You're going to be drunk calling them, a booty call them or something, it's still a phone call, right? I don't know. I'm no Dr. Phil, but I should have been writing this fucking book. <laughs> Chapter 3, actually, the, the last chapter that I read, because I, I, I don't read very fast, so it was already like two hours in. <laughs> was, he's just not that into you if he's not sleeping with you. And I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck, maybe there's a reason why these girls are single. <laughs> <laughs> if a guy's hanging out with someone, like, for two times and they're not sleeping with you, either you need to dress sluttier, suck a dick better, or you better go check your best friend's house. <laughs> but she's answering that door, butt naked, Leg spread, he's dives in, and there's no cut. <laughs> That's true. That is true. That's true.